Aren't these guys beautiful? They really are, but they're the bad guys. They are responsible for death and destruction of ash trees. We are going to learn all about them and their friends in this episode all about invasive species. So what's the difference between non-native species, invasive species, and pests? There is some overlap and it can be a little confusing. Let's start with this guy, the sphinx moth. It's a native species to where I live and one of my favorite animals in the garden. Native species are organisms that have occurred, now occur, or may occur without human intervention. When native species are found in nature, they are a vital part of the ecosystem. The sphinx moth is a wonderful nocturnal pollinator. We'll learn more about him in a bit. Non-native species do not occur naturally and are introduced as a result of intentional or accidental human activity. For example, honeybees are not native to North America. They were originally imported from Europe in the 17th century. We all love honey and honeybees beneficially pollinate many US crops and the flowers of your garden. Non-native species may or may not negatively impact the survival of other native species. They might even be beneficial like the honeybee. Invasive species are non-native species that cause harm to the environment, economy, and or health of other plant and animal species, including humans. To be invasive, a species must adapt to the new area easily and reproduce quickly. Invasive species include both plants and animals, both in water and on land. Back to our emerald ash borer friend. These guys probably came over accidentally from Asia in the early 2000s. This species larval stage is responsible for the death and destruction of its host, the ash tree. The larvae feed under the tree bark, eventually damaging the tree's ability to transport moisture and nutrients from the soil to the tree's leaves. Like poking a bunch of holes in your straw. This causes ash tree decline and death. Zebra mussels arrived in the Great Lakes of North America accidentally. They just hitched a ride on the side of large ships that traveled between the two regions. There are now so many zebra mussels in the Great Lakes that they have threatened the native species. The hammerhead flatworm was brought over from Southeast Asia in the soil of plants. They are now a known predator of earthworms and secrete chemicals through their skin to make themselves noxious to predators. These chemicals can cause skin irritation on humans if they hold the flatworm and domestic mammals if they consume it. Some species are brought to a new area on purpose. Often, these species are introduced as a form of pest control, like the cane toads brought to Australia to eat the gray-backed cane beetles that were devastating sugarcane plantations. They didn't help at all and killed anything that tried to eat them because they're poisonous. Other times, introduced species are brought in as pets. Many people have released pet Burmese pythons into the Everglades of South Florida. The huge snakes can grow to 20 feet long. 20 feet! Pythons native to the jungle of Southeast Asia have few natural predators in the Everglades. They feast on many local species, even eating alligators. If you're still here liking this video, you can show your support by hitting that like button and most importantly, please subscribe. Many invasive species thrive because they outcompete native species for food or because they don't have any natural predators. Invasive species destroy habitat, the places where other plants and animals naturally live. Nutria are large rodents native to South America. Ranchers brought them to North America in the 1900s, hoping to raise them for their fur, which is kind of gross. Once people weren't interested in the fur anymore, they were released into the wild, which seems kind of nice. Be free, little Nutria. I'm so disappointed in you. They loved their home. And today, they are a major pest in the Gulf Coast region of the United States. Nutria eat the tall grasses, vital to the region's marshy wetlands. This doesn't seem like too big of a deal, but these grasses provide food, nesting sites, and shelter for many organisms. They also help secure sediment and soil preventing the erosion of land. Nutria are destroying the area's food web and habitat by consuming the wetland grasses. Invasive species can also damage property. The zebra mussels we mentioned earlier clog the cooling systems and boat engines, while larger ones have damaged water pipes at power plants throughout the Great Lakes region. 
Pests are organisms that threaten human health or cause destruction. Let's look back at our sphinx moth. It's a wonderful nocturnal pollinator and an important part of the garden ecosystem until it lays its eggs on your tomato plants. The caterpillars grow to be several inches in length and have ferocious appetites, which isn't really a problem on one of its native host plants, the moonflower. This plant is super fast growing and the munching caterpillars actually help to thin it out a bit, but they are a tomato plant's worst nightmare. One caterpillar can strip every leaf from a single plant, no leaves means that the plant cannot make food and it will die. So in this instance, the sphinx moth would be considered a pest. All invasive species are pests, but not all pests are invasive species. To help us better understand, let's take a look at all of the organisms we talked about today and see where they fit on this chart. First, we have the sphinx moth, a great native nocturnal pollinator, but its caterpillars destroy tomato and sweet potato plants, making it a native pest. The emerald ash borer is not native and is responsible for the destruction of ash trees. It's non-native, a pest, making it invasive. Nutria are not native and destroy the natural wetland habitat of the Gulf Coast. Zebra mussels were accidentally introduced and quickly multiplied, causing harm to native waterways. Honeybees are not originally from North America, but have greatly increased the success of crops and provide delicious honey. Burmese pythons have thrived in their new Everglades home, almost eating some native wildlife into extinction. What are the invasive species in your area? Do your homework and see what you can do to help. If you want to learn more science, you can check out this video next.